Joe Jackson, not this one, but the guy that runs Hesed House will be joining us in a second. Uh, my friend Ryan Dowd ran Hesed House for years and taught me so much about homelessness that I didn't know and things you take for granted and myths and stereotypes that are out there. Ryan Dowd is now working on educating businesses on how they can best and most humanely treat people who are struggling. And one of the things Ryan Dowd taught me, which is, look, everybody's two missed mortgage payments away from being in the same problem. Mm. And a place like Hesed House has families living there. And it may just be there for a month or two months or three sure. months while sure. they're getting back on their feet. But people get up and they go to work from there. And they, they, they have kids that go to school from there. And it provides a very important uh, service. And one of the things they did, which I thought was brilliant, was... I don't know how to describe it other than sort of a mall approach where the various services from job placement services to um, therapy um, to um, alcohol and drug treatments for some folks if they need those. Mm -hmm. We're all in the same area because the one thing you right. want to do is avoid excuses when somebody needs help or they go, oh, I got to take a bus there. I don't think I can make it. So I miss a meeting, whatever right. the case may You'll be. You'll figure it out. And I like this idea, too, because it's a bridge. It's a bridge from one place to the next, so you don't fall down. So it's, uh, you know, it's the old Bruce Hornsby line, right? Um, the guy says, just get a job. It's not that simple. Right. And don't be cruel. Don't be mean. Count your blessings and know that for, uh, if not for the grace of God, could be any of us. Joe Jackson, uh, your predecessor, Ryan Dowd, says you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'll have to tell him his checks in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we appreciate the work you're doing. I've uh, done several acid uh, fundraisers, a big fan of Ryan's. I just sort of described the overall facility and how you guys do it. I think it's amazing. But for people that maybe can help or just want to look at information, what's the website? Sure. The website is uh, hesedhouse.org. There's one S in Hesed, and it's all one word. So we, we talk, and it's the right thing to talk about, by the way. We talk about making sure migrants aren't freezing to death when they're being sent here by right. Texas and various places. However, I'm concerned, and you can tell me if I should or shouldn't be, I'm concerned that maybe we're taking our eye off the ball for the homeless population that exists in Chicago and in the suburbs. Um, is it a concern to you? Um, it is. Uh, actually, you know, both of those groups are of great concern. To me, uh, the migrants who are, who are being bussed up here um, and, and just kind of pushed around, moved around from place to place, that's very concerning because we've seen that they show up here with, with nothing but the clothes on their backs and little to no direction of where to go. And that is, that's unnerving. That We can't be doing that. Um, at the same time, to your point, yes, absolutely. Uh, folks who are experiencing homelessness here from our communities are are just as marginalized as they've ever been and just at risk, especially with this recent weather of of death, of, of frostbite, of all these things as they've ever been. And we definitely need to do a better job of not only serving them, but one thing Steve, I've been seeing a lot recently, which is um, it, it, it's very frustrating, is they're being used as an excuse. You know, there I've seen people saying things like, well, we can't help the migrants because we have all these people experiencing homelessness already when, you know, a year ago, those people weren't caring anything about the people who were experiencing homelessness um, in our local communities. So, you know, we need to help them and we need to um, not use them as an excuse to also not help other people, including migrants. Joe, what you're doing is just, it's just so great what Hesed House does. You're helping the neighbors that are in need. And we know that a lot of time homeless folks, or some definitely want the help. They want to come to you. We know you can get them on the right path. Others don't want to be helped. Um, if somebody is looking for help, do they just come to you? Do you have volunteers that go out and in this terrible frigid cold go to uh, people sleeping on the street and say, come with me? How does that work? Absolutely. We have an entire street outreach team uh, who is they are phenomenal. They go out. Uh, they are in pretty much constant communication with local encampments that we have out in our area. Um, they'll bring out supplies because the idea is let's go out and let's build trust because the, the biggest reason people, uh, you know, 
would be outside is because they don't necessarily trust the shelters. They don't trust the social service organizations because they've been burned in the past. And so let's go out there. Let's build trust. As Ryan has said in the past, let's get pennies in the cup and let's see if we can encourage them to come into a safer environment, come into the warm environment that is the shelter. And once they're there in the shelter, let's get them connected with all those services we have on site to help them get back up on their feet again and and end the trauma that comes with homelessness. Um, One of the things that uh, my son uh, taught me, along with Ryan, was in regards to the humanity of all of this, is, you know, you're walking down Michigan Avenue and somebody is panhandling, or even somebody uh, working their butt off trying to sell streetwise. Um, People can be put off by it, and they'll hurry by, or they won't say anything. And acknowledging the human being that's there is a big deal. It's okay if you don't want to give money to somebody. It's okay if you don't have money to give to somebody. But to not acknowledge that someone's trying to speak with you and to blow them off, there's a dignity piece to that where we make everything worse if we don't do that as human beings. Talk about that for a second. Absolutely. And, and that is that is one of the biggest motivators for me being at Hesed House is reaffirming the humanity of, of folks who are experiencing homelessness because it's robbed from them in every sense and every at every turn. Um, you know, like you said, you don't have to give money if you don't feel comfortable or if you don't have money to give. But give a smile. Don't cross the street and walk on the other sidewalk just to avoid people. People notice those things. Uh, you know, in our in our shelter, I've had grown men break down in tears because I met them, you know, say on a Tuesday, introduced myself. I learned their name and I saw them again on Thursday or Friday of that week. And walked up and said, you know, hey, hey, Jim, how you doing? Good to see you this morning. And just the fact that I remembered their name caused right. them to break down in yeah. tears. And that is what is what we're robbing people of by ignoring them, uh, willfully ignoring them, or even, you know, worse, terrorizing or traumatizing them even more. Yeah, and you know, think about that. Think about how long that conversation, or how much good you're going to do with a conversation that goes like this. Go, listen, I don't have any money for you, but I'm worried about you being out here. You know, what's your name? And yep. uh, do you have a place to go? And, you know, Hesed House is, uh, you know, a resource. And by the way, that even applies to the city. If somebody in the city doesn't know where to go, you can say call Hesed House or You'll obviously know. they're not kind of an internet connection mm-hmm. sitting on the street. But, uh, you know, offer your phone, call them and say, listen, they can, they can tell you things. Catholic Charities, a lot of this falls on Catholic Charities in the city. But there's amazing people in the city, and I'm sure you'll know many of them, Joe, who are out every night as well in this cold, uh, trying to get people help. But let's please, 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 for the grace of God and your own good faith and goodwill and good luck and blessings that you have, let's be a little nicer to each other and let's understand that politics are what they are. But let's be a little more helpful and a little less evil uh, in the world to be a big deal. How do we help you guys? Uh, the, the biggest way people can help is, is just get involved. If, you know, if you can support financially, that is always extremely helpful um, to keep our programs going, to keep our doors open. Um, if people want to volunteer, they can go to our website um, and, and fill out a form there to volunteer. Um, you know, but I think the biggest thing is just what we've been talking about is just take the moment in your life when, when you can reaffirm the humanity of folks around you to please do that, um, you know, to, to please just say hi, shake somebody's hand, don't be afraid um, of things that might make you uncomfortable or that sort of thing. Hesedhouse.org, H-E-S-E-D house, one word, hesedhouse.org. God bless you, man. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Joe. Thank you very much, Steve. That's uh, Joe Jackson. And the other thing, too, is that they need things like uh, shampoos and mouthwash sure. and, you know, gloves and, and you know, little little things, deodorant. We right, talk about. Right on the home page. Right on the home There's page. There's a you list can of see things it. you could Drop get, contribute. Drop it off. Because yep. we have those little bottles of things laying around the house. Sure. 100%.